My boyfriend and I have been together over a year, but we did break up for seven months due to the fact we were young and immature and didn't know how to properly conduct a relationship or we weren't willing to learn and grow together. Now that we're a little more mature it's much healthier the only downside is during the seven months we both got into our different respective relationships, but closer to the end of those seven months I realized he unblocked me on Instagram. My thought process was enough time has passed, we can be friends. A couple weeks later I decide to message him as I found an item of his while cleaning my room, so I wanted to return it. So I message him and then we start talking as friends, eventually getting back together. Now my only problem is that his ex keeps undermining me and trying to get back with him. She's waiting for him outside classes, texting his cousins and other family members, bothering his friends and texting him on burner numbers and accounts. Then she adds me to a group chat, but I left as it was not worth my time. I never knew what this girl looked like because me and my boyfriend don't go to the same school, but yesterday she decided it was okay to give him a card and gift since his birthday just passed. He did decline all of it and had made it clear many times he is in a happy healthy relationship with me and to leave him alone, but she doesn't care. After seeing her I grew very insecure. She's so beautiful and goddess looking, I'm not all that pretty, so it made me very insecure. All her actions have made me very insecure. I've tried to be understanding as she might just be hurting still, but she's crossing boundaries that are really hurting me. My boyfriend has done everything in his power to make it clear to her, but it's not working and I find it's making me really distant because I'm hurting. I can't blame him, it's not in his control. I knew she hated me from the beginning as I am my boyfriend's first love, please advise nicely, thank you. Hello, I'm 21 female and recently gave birth to my baby Mercedes. My baby daddy's 22 and we were together for a little over a year and a half, and he lived with me in my apartment for about a year. I don't take birth control because it makes me sick, so every time we were together, I told him to use protection, but a couple times he either said he forgot or said sorry he got caught up in the moment. His carelessness caused me to get pregnant. He wanted an abortion, but I decided to keep her. He said he wasn't ready to be a dad and wanted no part of this, that I had to either choose him or the baby. We never really had the kids talk, were young and never really thought about it. After a huge fight he broke up with me, left me to be a single mom and moved back in with his mom and even changed his number to avoid me. I work and pay for insurance, so unlike some of my friends who have bragged about their hospital stay being free, I was stuck with a steep hospital bill of a little over $3,000. I have no clue how I'm going to pay the hospital bill, along with being a single self-sufficient mother. I had to drop out of school, but while I'm at work, his mom agreed to watch Mercedes for me. But I have to supply baby food and diapers. I asked him to help pay for half the hospital bill since he was a part of creating our baby. But he said he didn't want any part of her so he shouldn't have to pay for it. I filed for child support, but this backfired big time. He quit his job to pursue his dream of being a rapper, and his mom told me she refuses to watch Mercedes anymore unless I drop the child support request and stop harassing him for help with what she calls my mistake, and that if I don't, I'll regret it. His sister and his friends have left multiple voicemail, notes on my door harassing me, and they keep slowly driving by my apartment. I have not idea what I'm going to do. I feel as adults we're both responsible for our baby, whether he wants to be a part of her life or not. I can't afford to keep going on my own. Babies are expensive. Aida, please like and subscribe for more. My daughter Josie, 19, had her first baby when she was 15. My husband and I were devastated at first because we knew this was going to be a very difficult path for our daughter. My husband and I helped Josie take care of our grandson and encouraged her to finish high school. She never did because she said her priority was being a mother and she didn't have time to invest into finishing high school. We told her she would either go to school or get a job, but we weren't going to give her the option of doing neither for more than a year after she gave birth, so she got a part-time job at a hair salon. The father of my grandson, who was her age, would give her about $100 a month for baby-related stuff and would come over every couple of months to see his son but that was all he did, although he lived in the same city as his son. A few days ago, Josie broke the news to us that she's pregnant again. The father is the same boy who got her pregnant the first time. My husband and I were pissed. How can she get pregnant by that boy for the second time when he was very obviously not consistent or helpful with their first baby? 
And with Josie living with us rent-free and having to take care of my grandson for her so she can work, go out, etc., this does not seem fair at all that she can add another baby into this mess. After a few days of thinking about it and discussing it with my husband, we decided to tell Josie to move in with the father of her children and raise the children together. She said they're not in a relationship so they can't live together and they wouldn't be able to afford it anyway. I told her she needs to figure something out because we, my husband and I, are not willing to raise another baby for her. She said, you're never satisfied with anything I do. You told me to get a job, so I did. And now you're complaining that you had to raise the baby. You wouldn't have had to if I didn't have to work. I can't do both things at once. And I definitely can't raise two kids on my own and work. What 19-year-old can do that? I replied, we tried to teach you how to be responsible after your first baby, and we did all we could to be there for you. You clearly haven't learned a thing, and it's not our job to keep picking up after you. So before your baby arrives, discuss living arrangements with the father and figure something out. She has been crying and not talking to us since. She's called both sets of her grandparents to speak to my husband and I and change our minds so we can help her raise her babies. My husband's parents think we're being very harsh and punishing her for something that's already happened, which isn't helpful. They offered to take Josie and our grandson in, but Josie doesn't want to take her kids so far away from their dad. My in-laws are saying, we'll regret abandoning our daughter. I just don't know what more we could do without sacrificing our own lives. Ada, please like and subscribe for more. I'm 16 female and live with my parents and my younger siblings. My mom died when I was four months old. She had brain cancer and refused to continue treatment because of her pregnancy. Shortly after my mother's death, my dad moved us because he couldn't stay where they had built a life together, which is understandable, but this left mom's family behind. My grandparents, aunts, uncles, and cousins who are a part of my family. My dad married my new mom when I was a year old. Due to her insecurity and a desire to forget the painful memories he had made with my real mom, contact with my biological mom's family was limited, and only when my new mother wasn't around. My new mom didn't want to share the role of family. She didn't want to talk about them or to talk about my biological mom and wanted to pretend that she never existed. My new mom adopted me because she didn't want to feel like she was less of a mom to our family. And my dad has just never gotten over the pain of losing my mom and he says he wants to bury the memories of the painful past. I don't fully understand why they couldn't put me first in that decision but they didn't. I want to be a part of my biological mother's family. I may not be able to have her in my life, but at least I can be a part of the other family she left behind. I also don't think it's fair to my grandparents, they lost their daughter, and then shortly after they basically lost their grandchild. My childhood was happy for the most part. I was able to play with my two new siblings from my dad, an adopted mom, a little brother and sister. But it also had some negatives like wishing I knew the rest of my family better or had known my mom. Also, I wasn't accepted by my adopted mom's family, as I wasn't really their blood. So that was always fun. As I got older, I initiated more contact with my family. It started with texting, calling, and video calls regularly and then convincing my dad to let me go for a weekend here and there. I have loved getting to know them and they have loved getting to know me. My dad and adopted mom really started to let me know how much they disliked me having extra contact with my grandparents, that I should put my immediate family first. My dad said it's painful for him and my mom told me she feels less important because I am chasing a relationship that ties me to a mom I never knew. I recently went through some pictures of my dad and adopted mom and they're dated right around the same time my mother died. I asked my dad if he had been cheating on my mom and this caused a huge fight. He refuses to talk about it, saying, I just hate our family. Why are there pictures of them together within a month of my mother's death? And why were they married within six months of her death? If he was truly mourning, why would he be seeing her or getting married so soon? Was he seeing her while my mom was dying of cancer? I don't know what to believe. Ada, please like and subscribe for more.